Today's question. What do you what machine do you use to cut your design and your wood? Okay, so what machine will we be using to cut our design and our legs, right? So again, our criteria for or first off, what is our what machine are we using? Vansa, right? The one that we went over yesterday. So what I'm gonna do today is I'll talk about you know kind of the main points that we have kind of um, that we'll talk about this way just because it is such a small machine we'll talk more about it out here I'll do some of the demonstration out uh, in the lab very briefly just because 20 of you guys all around a bandsaw the best I'll show you some things to kind of be careful of as well uh, can you guys turn off the lights all right so this is the bandsaw safety video the correct version. Okay. So, one, uh, what you have here is the guard or the guide. And what this actually does is I'll talk about this as well. If I step back out of the way, I hope I do this. Um, okay. So, right here, does anyone know why it's called a band? So, yeah, it's just a continuous band. It's just like the name implies, it's a band, it's a continuous piece of metal. There's the actual uh, drive pulley down is down here, so this will actually cause this to spin. Then you just basically have an alignment or a tension pulley up top. What this does is it guides the material, so it's, you have a roller on the back here, and you can see that well, once we get out there, once you start using it, that there's one located above and below the table. And what that does is it guides your blade. Why would you want a guide above and below your material? It's just that so it might like, get off the track. Yeah, one. A straight cut. A straight cut. Yeah, right. So if what ends up happening is if you had this whole gap up above, you know, the guard raised, you can actually take your hand and move that back and forth, obviously, while the blade is stopped. But there's enough slack in that. I don't know if like you guys saw, um, especially like on 140 telephone wires. You see those this morning, they're blowing all over the place. Okay, that's kind of the same friction that's going um, along with that. And it'll actually want to start to wander back and forth. So what you want to do is not only to, uh, you want to keep this, the distance between the two guards or rollers as small as possible, for safety, but also so you get a better cut. Okay, so um, a good rule of thumb is basically a quarter inch or less than your finger. So you'll see, I believe I do it in this here. I already did. I already did. So what I did here, you can't see because my shirt is away. But you actually set the the guard on the material, raise it up a little bit, and then tighten it down. Okay, that way, again, all you really need is about a quarter of an inch, and then it's so that you can uh, basically put, slip your finger underneath there. Does anyone know what type of cuts these are? Relief cuts. Relief cuts. Okay. What? Why would I need relief cuts? Because when you're cutting with a bandsaw, you pull it up one direction. Because if you try to pull it out, that should pull the blade off the guard. Okay, yeah, for that as well. You don't want to like warp the blade. Yeah, there's actually depending on how wide the blade is, there it it lets you know how sharp of a current or how how small of a radius you can make. So you know, what the relief cuts does is it allows you as you're turning your cuts. For the it makes room for the back end of that blade so it kicks out and i wish you could kind of see this better on the styrofoam but here it, what it's done here and i was actually able to pull that off but the idea is a re, re, relief cuts is you only need them on corners or turns or radiuses or anything like that you don't need them on straight cuts it's only when you're going to be twisting the blade and everything like that when um when it like i said what happens is as you cut towards or down that line, those pieces pop out, again, giving you room for that the back end of that blade. Okay. Um, let's see. 
All right, the other thing that you can do, basically on an industry scale size, it's the same principle, it's a bandsaw, but you can make, it's called, um, you, what you do is you actually take the board and you cut it in half, resawing it. Okay, so when you resaw a board, you'd actually turn it on end and then you'd rip it down for thickness. And what that does is it helps for when you're bookmarking some boards, things like that. I'll try and get a picture up and stuff of that tomorrow. But basically, the main points to remember is that if anything does break on here, you know, just wait for it to stop, come to a complete stop, because what that ends up happening is it has a potential that it could actually all coil up there and act like a big spring. But when you're making long, long straight cuts, don't back out of long straight cuts. If you end up backing out of curved cuts, which you can do, you always want to shut the machine off. Okay? That way it won't give a tendency for it to pinch, and a lot of times you're in a hurry and you're trying to back out, things like that. Um, the blade itself will want to start to wander, so you actually kind of have to start turning before you get into the corner. Okay, so kind of like when you're driving, you go straight, you don't wait until the corner happens, and then turn, you start turning a little bit before, so that the back end of your car can follow along that curve and not turn over. Okay? Um, any other questions about the band? All right, I'll go out there and I'll make an example. Can you guys grab the lights?